Welcome back to the Commercial Real Estate Show. I'm Michael Bull. Today we're talking about the multifamily market. Please welcome my guest. We have Ryan Holmes here. He is Chief Executive Officer with Rise Real Estate, and they were tip- they were formerly Ambling University Development Group. Ryan, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having us. We also have Tim Schrager here in Studio One with us. He is a principal with Perennial Properties, uh, headquartered here in Atlanta. Tim, thanks for joining us. Good to be here. Well, we appreciate it. And, you know, guys, we've just heard about the the investment market. The apartment market is doing extremely well. But I think my guests are also interested in hearing it from from your point of view, especially from the student housing side and from the regular apartment side of kind of what you guys are seeing on the ground level. So, you know, when you talk about the investment market, um, you know, what are you seeing at Perennial uh, as far as, you know, buying and selling? And, and uh, is the market a little frothy, what you're seeing? It's definitely a little frothy. We're really focused on new development, but uh, from what I'm seeing going on in the investment world, it's getting really challenging to find good quality deals at a fair price. Mm-hmm. So you got a lot of money chasing a lot, of, uh, too few deals. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're really staying focused on new development where we think we can add the most value. Yeah. And uh, Ryan, you doing the same thing? Same thing. Uh, we're a little more spread out and go from Michigan to Pit- Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, trying to make sure we're building the, pro- the right product in the right market. So um, it is very difficult to uh, do acquisition, especially from a development perspective, to add value. So I guess that means it's time to sell, gentlemen. <laughs> uh, maybe if I knew a good broker, <laughs> I'd sell something. <laughs> oh, heck. Um, well, let's talk about uh, the debt market then. When you guys are, are building these new projects, uh, how are you finding the debt market, Ryan? Uh, the debt market was very strong in the first three quarters of the year. We're, I think everybody has, has done so much lending this year. Everybody's kind of kind of pulling back a little bit, saying, "Hey, I mean, we're good. We've already we've done all the lending we want to do this year, and we like your project, but let's try to close it next year." So we're just seeing a little bit of pushback, and there's just not that aggressiveness to getting you know five term sheets in two weeks. All right. So their bucket's full, and uh, they just don't want to put more in the bucket, huh? So I guess you're having to go to other sources. I I would think there's plenty of sources today and some new sources out there, but it's nothing like going to somebody that you've worked with in the past, right, that that already loves you. That's right, and I think some of our deals don't have to, you know, close, so we can kind of wait wait it out a little bit, and you're finally finalizing the rest of your plans and really getting things ticked and tied so you're very prepared when you go to close. Right, and you guys, tell us a little bit about what you're doing. You're building new student housing projects uh, along the East Coast areas? That's correct. Mm-hmm. Um, we're building along the East Coast. Well, we're doing some in Michigan, but some of our uh, places we're doing more next to medical centers, and so there's a higher education component to it, so we're doing maybe more studios, ones, twos, and threes, and then doing some of those fully furnished with some shorter term leases. Interesting. How many projects do you have going right now? Uh, we have about seven projects going right now. Okay, that's pretty active. Are you looking for more sites? We are, but we're, uh, we're very picky on what we're trying to do. We're not trying to go into markets that uh, we've been in Atlanta, um, built next to Georgia State and Georgia Tech, and uh, we're trying to go out to some other markets right now that we're just seeing not so much, too much building going on. That's right. And you found a broker that found a good deal for you, right? We did. <laughs> Got to use you twice. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about uh, change gears a little bit. and Let's talk about technology. I mean, there's been a ton of money invested in commercial real estate technology like we've really never seen before. And it seems like there's also more money in the market, right? The, the participants have a little more money than we've had in, in the downturn to spend on technology. How is technology impacting uh, your market, Tim? It's having a really major impact on how we're managing our properties, how we're leasing. Uh, One of the really interesting things that I've seen happen this year when I was at the National Apartment Association Conference, CoStar has made a huge splash into our into our segment of the market, whereas before they never were bothering with multifamily. Mm -hmm. Uh, Their their business um, is really interesting in that for the first time ever, you can turn on your television and see national ads being run to advertise for apartment renters and they're they're a locator service so they're trying to reel in the the customer and then bring them to the residential properties and collect a fee for doing so Uh, business apparently is so good for them that in las vegas this last june they gave away a tesla with a hundred thousand dollars cash in the back seat and you know some people thought this was a really interesting stunt but what i realized it was brilliant because the thousands of people that signed up for that drawing, now they have all those people's names, email addresses, so it was really a great stunt. And they've got Jeff Goldblum on TV 
advertising for them. But what we're really seeing down on the ground is that the leasing process has changed dramatically. You can now sit in your living room, go online, take a virtual tour of, of a property, and these virtual tours are not what they were just a couple years ago. They're really incredible, and they don't cost a lot to make anymore, and that's made a huge difference. So now for just a few hundred bucks, a developer can make a really cool virtual tour of an apartment where you can walk into the unit on your tablet, on your telephone, you can spin 360 in the kitchen, you can go into the bathroom, you can walk into the bedroom, you can see it all. You don't even have to be there. And it, it's so real in HD that it, it's like you're there. And so now the process of leasing, you're sitting on your sofa in your living room, you're looking at the, at the units, you can tour around the common spaces of the property, you can fill out an application, you can use your credit card, pay down your deposit, and you can rent an apartment without having to get up off the couch. Uh, so you can also get the approval process, is that automated as well? It is automated, it <laughs> takes a few minutes, but uh, yes, you, you fill out your credit report, uh, and, and it'll shoot it off to the, uh, to the agency that uh, is doing that report for us, and they'll send us back your score, and you'll find out if you got approved or not. Wow, that's amazing. And a lot of that uh, technology really has to work well on the phone, doesn't it, uh, Ryan? Yeah, I mean, if you can't do it on your phone, then it's not going to happen. And then you have about three seconds to get somebody's attention. So, I mean, they want the pictures downloaded instantly. They want to see it and move on. Yeah. And how is else's technology impacting the apartment industry? I think one of the biggest things we're seeing is the, uh, the Internet service that you have to have at your properties now. It's really ratcheted up dramatically. It's one of the first questions prospects are asking. What speed is the Internet running here? And it can't be slow. You know, it can't be anything like the old days with the dial-up. It's got to be gigabyte speed. Uh, if, it's in, if it's in the area where they want to live and someone else has it, they're more likely they're going to go live there because of that. And it can't just be uh, hardwired into their unit. It's got to be Wi-Fi all over the property, accessible at the pool, in the community areas. Um, that, that's what people want today. Yeah, I mean, that's key. I mean, my son's 16 and my daughter's 18. And if they don't have fast enough Internet, there, it's really bugging them. They're just going crazy. And, you know, one of the issues that we're running into is really directly related to the student housing today mm -hmm. because the student housing guys are putting it in. So when these kids are coming out of college, if you don't have what they had in school, they're not going to be interested. Yeah, they're going backwards, right? So you guys really had to ramp it up in the student housing area, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, the broadband's got to be great. I mean, we're even putting boosters in for cell phones in the concrete buildings. If their cell phone does not work, I mean, they're the first person that's going to come down to the office and say, hey, my cell phone doesn't work. What are you going to do to fix it? Right. And so you're, you're dealing with a lot more technology issues on site than you would be before because they, just, they, they need the boost and they need the network. Right. So they're not only... Uh, playing and, and reading and, and watching videos, but they're actually sometimes doing schoolwork as well, right? <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, we hope. <laughs> yeah. so that's how we get our renewals, they have to stay in school. <laughs> uh, that's interesting. So the uh, uh, student housing market, when you're doing these new projects, uh, are they typically leasing up in the first year? Yeah, we've mo almost most of our projects do lease up in first year, but some markets are a little bit slower. You might get to 80 or 85 percent, depending on when you start construction. So we're trying to start construction earlier, so the product is more visual than um, a little bit later. Yeah. So it might you might have to sit on some a little bit more construction interest proceeds, but you, they're seeing a product they can walk into. Well, that's got to be envious for the regular apartment developers who maybe they're renting 20 or 25 units of a month and it takes them a long time to fill up. Well, we're going to talk more about construction costs. We're going to talk more about some of the uh, impacts on the multifamily market and what to expect moving forward. Stay with us. I'm Michael Bull. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. We'll be right back. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty, a great place to do business. Excelligent, information for the professionals, and commercial search, properties for sale and lease. To access these companies or for additional videos, podcasts, and articles, visit CREshow.com.